inside this hotel Trying to find some peace of mind Myla Village is one of Cornwall's areas of outstanding beauty and also home to a stronger sailing club who are hosting the B14 UK National Championships. It's a quiet and picturesque retreat just outside Falmouth in the county of Cornwall. Plenty of history and a distinguished record in sailing, which was the home club for a young Sir Ben Ainsley who went on to win five consecutive medals, four gold, at the Olympic Games. But before we start with the racing, Let's take a walk about the area. The National Maritime Museum Cornwall, located in the centre of Falmouth, is a mecca for any sailor or person interested to learn more about this exciting sport. We took the opportunity to take a look around and meet with Graham Stratfold. We're now uh, our own independent museum uh, and we retain the national title because we house, as you'll see later, the national small boat collection. So uh, this was sort of passed to us by Greenwich and we care for it and, and that's basically how the museum came to be. So we have, as I say, the small boat collection and then to the front of the museum we have galleries which sort of are more about sort of Cornwall and the sea rather than the, the small boats that are hanging above us. So what I love about the place is an independent museum. We sort of live or die by, by our businesses, if you like. So it's by our admission charges and the retail and the catering and the corporate events and various other things we do. And we, it's fantastic that that model works. Obviously, Rita is, is behind me, you know, and that's an interesting example. It was used in the 2012 Olympics, given to the museum, and then borrowed again for the 2016 Olymp Olympics. It went back out again. Now, you're not going to find her and anywhere else. We have a new boat on display called Father's Day uh, and it's the smallest boat in the world to sail the Atlantic. You can look at boats, you can look out of our window and see boats on the marina but you don't know the stories behind them and that's what we do. If you're thinking about having a truly Cornish experience, then go no further than getting aboard Tethra for a unique gastronomic boat ride around the Carrick Road's stunning coastline, where she's moored at the Myla Yacht Harbour. So it's me and my friend Charlotte um, that run the business. Um, she's actually cooking in the galley at the moment. We're about to do a charter, so we're just getting ready for that. We started it together. We bought the boat um, last winter, or the winter before last, and um, we, with a group of friends and people that we employed, uh, we built her over seven months. So she's an ex lou fishing boat. Um, and yeah, she fished out of Lou for about 30 years, um, became a leisure craft, and then we bought her. She was in quite bad repair. Um, but we kind of, we, we knew what we wanted to do with her. So it was kind of nice having a blank canvas. So we run river trips, basically, or cruises around the Carrick Roads and the Fowl Estuary. Um, we do breakfast, lunch, afternoon, tea and dinner. Um, ranging from two to three hours. Uh, we've got a galley on board. Uh, there used to be the engine room, but <laughs> our engine's now under the floor. And so we prepare everything fresh on board. We buy as much local produce as uh, possible. So there's a fisherman that we use here for our fish and crab and farm, a um, Myla farm that we use for our fresh produce. So the food that we do is very, is seafood based, um, just because we're on the water and we want to use the fishermen around here. Um, but we do tailor it to different groups, um, obviously with vegans or vegetarians. Um, we've both done a lot of sailing and travelling, so it's kind of influenced by that a bit. So Mediterranean, there's a little bit of Middle Eastern in there. 
very sort of fresh. Uh, we do like shared platters, so everything's feast style dining. So coming out and passing around the table, so things that work well like that. So like a whole baked fish and salads to go with it, sides to go with it. Um, so it's a more of a social way of sort of sitting around the table and getting to know everyone or with your group. I've just made a return after 12 years absence in the boat. Last time we were here with the Worlds, we had a pretty good result. So we're looking for a pretty solid day today. You can certainly lose an event on the first day, so we're going to try and make sure we have some nationals. good solid, sorry, nationals, <laughs> good solid results and uh, see how we get on. Plan for the day is keep it simple. Trying to get some decent results. Uh, no one ever wins wins an event on the first day, and uh, try and keep it clean. Good starts, always critical. We need to get clear off the line. We're quite light, so we need to not be with any of the, the heavy guys. Clear air, follow Josh's, Josh's tactics, he always tells me where to go. And today it's just going to be calm, cool, and collected, no rushing. Keep the mouth pointing upward. Pluck your eyebrows on the way, shave your legs, and then he was a sheesh, says he be. Take a walk on the wild side. He said, hey, honey, take a walk on the wild side. Just wanted to talk a little bit about the B14. It's a uh, two-person um, non-trapeze hiking um, skiff. It was uh, designed by Julian Braithwaite back in about 1985. Um, it currently is still the fastest two-person non-trapeze, non-foiling boat on the water. Um, it's sailed by um, a number of uh, different crews, uh, ranging from um, youth right the way up to uh, um, the older pensioners in the fleet. <laughs> um, we've got about uh, 22 boats here today taking part in the nationals and uh, I'm sure all of them will be out on the water today. It's an asymmetric uh, boat with a uh, 30 metre uh, square, 30 square metre kite. It, um, it's, a, it's a kite that's bagged, it doesn't come into a chute in the bow. Um, it still looks, looks as modern uh, today as it did uh, look futuristic back then. Um, it's really nice to actually have a boat that actually planes upwind. I mean, it's uh, stunning. It's a very simple boat to sail. It only has Cunningham uh, kicker and outhaul. There's uh, no way to adjust the uh, mass rake or shrouds or tension or mass rams or anything on the water. So that really makes you focus on the sailing and sailing the boat right and well. And there's a true team. Um, some people think it's a crew-led boat, but I personally think it's a true symbiosis between crew and helm. Um, to make the boat go really quick. The boat is a one design uh, class. Um, it has evolved slowly over the years. Originally when it started out it had an aluminium uh, mast. Uh, now it has a carbon mast and originally it had car uh, aluminium racks and now it's got carbon racks. Um, the weights are all uh, controlled so that they're all still roughly the same weight. So boats that have got now carbon racks may be carrying a little bit of lead just to bring it up to the same weight. The boat has a fully battened mainsail um, uh, from a variety of manufacturers. So though it's a one-design um, boat, designed by uh, built by Sea Evolution, 
Um, it uh, has, you can choose your sales as long as they measure from different manufacturers, uh, which gives you um, obviously much more scope for uh, trying different things and uh, tailoring the sales to suit your particular type of sailing. Also, it's a, a, a very, very active um, um, race calendar as well, where from sort of uh, from February right the way through to December, we have at least one event every single month somewhere in the country. Uh, Stokes Bay, Whitstable, obviously we're stronger at Sailing Club. Um, this year we've got the Europeans and the Worlds out in Karnak, which uh, quite a lot of people are going to. Uh, we've got entries uh, from Australia for that, uh, and Germany, and also the UK.
Today, uh, each race was um, very different tactically. <coughs> so the first race was a force two and very choppy. Second race was a force not much and very shifty with more flat water. And then the third race was, um, was fantastic, a nice uh, force four uh, offshore. Um, so with those conditions, each of the three races was very different. Uh, so the first race was coming off the sea, force two, very choppy, um, a little bit patchy. Um, so with that, before the start, we discussed it and we, we said that uh, we wouldn't want to be tacking a lot in those kind of conditions with that much chop. And it was going to be about getting a nice wide lane so you could get your bow down and really keep the boat moving through those conditions. And it, it was very difficult. I don't think we were particularly quick, um, but we just kept trying to keep uh, a clear lane and, and, and clear wind as much as possible. And then taking some of the shifts that were there, um, certainly both upwind and downwind, there was enough to take a few more shifts than you usually would in a, in a B14. Um, so I think that was the, the kind of story of the first race. Um, the second race I kind of strangely liked because it was a bit like French and Pond. It was, uh, it was kind of one to five knots, sh very shifty, and the water had gone pretty flat. So it was really back to just tack when it flaps. You know, when, uh, when the, there was a big shift and they were, some of them were really big, literally the jib was almost backing, you just go with them. Um, and then just looking up the race course and trying to see what was coming down and staying in pressure because the difference between uh, a little bit of pressure and no pressure, the speed difference is, is huge in a B14. So it's just trying to stay in pressure and, and join it up as much as possible. Um, then the uh, third race was fantastic. We didn't expect it. We'd sat bobbing around for about an hour in no wind. And then uh, the wind came from completely the opposite direction, um, probably about 15 knots. Uh, and they raced us back inside the um, estuary so it was offshore, uh, very shifty, um, and when we lined up before the start, the, the wind was coming slightly off, off the right-hand shore, uh, so we decided um, to go hard left on the first beat uh, because there was uh, just going to be big shadow under that right-hand shore and also a bit of convergence out the left-hand side of the course. Um, so we started on the committee boat and did a one-tap beat, which um, works as skiffs, I wouldn't do in a slow boat. Uh, sailed all the way out to the left corner and, and that worked. We, we got more pressure um, and we got a bit lucky with a little shift out there and, and, and led in. And then we did the same uh, downwind. We got out to, as you look downwind, what's now the right hand side to so the same side of the course uh, to get that more pressure. Uh, and we just kept trying to do that all race um, because it, it was a clear pattern. It was shifting horrible under the shore and uh, better further out with, with convergence. So that was the, um, the tactics for today, three very different races. When I need you the most Interesting day today. We uh, we went out in what was some reasonable breeze, and then got out to the race course, and it got a bit light and shifty. So we baked four hours, reasonably frustrating sailing, and then we came back into the roads and spent 45 minutes of complete exhilaration, uh, thrashing around 18, 20 knots. It was awesome fun. Uh, we had quite a good day today, actually. Uh, apart from the fact that we'd uh, rigged for heavy weather and. Uh, Unfortunately, it wasn't quite so heavy as we expected to start with, so uh, we were just chasing around, and then the, when the wind picked up on the way back, and uh, we, we uh, made our first tack, which was not, not too bad a tack until I missed the toe strap and disappeared out the back, and he sailed off without me, and I had to go swim after the boat. But apart from that, it was quite a good day, and we really enjoyed it. It's, it's really good here. Rolf normally sails an 800, and my crew had to pull out on Thursday, so Rolf's kindly jumped in. So what sums up our sailing role for the first yeah, race? Yeah, first race had a fifth, recovered from probably halfway down the fleet. Uh, it was good, second race. Uh, <laughs> so we, we forget about that, 17th uh, in no wind at all. And the last race had a great start, second round the first mark, and held the second through the whole race uh, yeah. behind uh, the winners, Nick and Toby. <laughs>
Let me down. 